Hey. What's up, everybody? It's One Peg. Uh, hope everything's going well with you. Happy, uh, I don't even know what, Wednesday? Wednesday, yeah. Today's my daughter's birthday. Happy birthday, Red. I love you. You're the best nine-year-old ever. It's true. It's really, it's really true. Anyway, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about body armor, okay? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Body armor in Tarkov with stomach and arms armor is bad. And, uh, and here's why. Enjoy. Very early on, the vast majority of even the newest players among us realize the simple truth in Tarkov. Armor is good. The higher the tier of armor, the better. Tier 6, better than tier 5, which is better than tier 4, etc. And in most cases, people are willing to sacrifice the mobility impairment that those larger tiers of armor provide for the extra coverage. Armor penetration tables and ballistics will tell you how likely armor is to be penetrated by a certain round with repeated impacts a la Battle Buddy, for example, where people like Veritas and No Food After Midnight have worked out shots to kill Monte Carlo simulations. If you guys aren't sure what a Monte Carlo simulation is, uh, just, just Google it. It's actually pretty cool. And while you can somewhat simulate how likely someone is to die based on a number of hits to the armor, what I see people constantly and consistently discussing is whether or not armor with extended coverage is good. Now, this may be an unpopular opinion, but my opinion nonetheless is that armor that covers more than just a vital area is overall a bad choice. And here's why. Prior to the introduction of Jaeger, something like a blackened limb, especially a leg, and especially without any kind of painkiller would render you nearly immobile. And as we all have come to learn, lack of mobility in Tarkov usually means you're dead, especially considering things like Peeker's advantage. The same could be said for the stomach, where once blackened out, you either had to prioritize working toward an extract or find something to eat or drink, or you'd be finding yourself the victim of dying due to lack of hydration. And now it's both hydration and energy that could kill you, thanks to the most recent changes. So naturally, it made sense to want to have something like a Gen 4 or equivalent style of armor that would at the very least protect your stomach. In fact, it was extremely common to see people running around with either a Gen 4 Alton combo or an Alton with a fort. But I personally believe that in the current state of the game, this approach is a mistake. Before we get into this next bit, I want to take a step back and explain why I'm getting at what I'm getting at here. There's a lot of folks in the Tarkov community that might be watching this and not understand how body armor actually functions and what the ultimate goal is for armor in Tarkov versus where it is now. And I think that deserves some clarification. For those new to ballistic vests like I was once upon a time, the way they work is most commonly via a system of areas that allow for either plate inserts or already have an amount of armor sewn into them. The areas of these vests can have different armored ratings. For instance, the arms and sides of a fort armor in the real world have a lesser armor rating than that of the chest, back, and stomach. There are also areas of these vests that are unarmored in certain circumstances, like armpits, or the front of the neck, the clavicle, the nape of the neck, just as an example, depending on the type of armor. Armor like the Gen 4 and the Fort offer some form of neck protection in this case, but the lighter and more compact rigs obviously do not. The reason for all of this background is because eventually Tarkov wants to move to this type of system where there are more heavily armored areas with pockets of vulnerability, just like in the real world, which is what Nikita in prior podcasts had been talking about in regard to manufacturing your own armored rig with swappable plates. But right now, that's not how the system works. Right now, it's just one big absorbent hitbox comprised of a chest area, the back, your stomach, and your arms. Now, as an example, let's take the current arguable meta round for 556, which is, for all intents and purposes, 855A1. This is obtainable from vendors at an earlier stage of Tarkov's mid-game. Now, with the updated ammo charts, as I outlined in a previous video, as of right now, it has a higher rate of penetration than its tracing counterpart, which is 856A1. It also does a considerable amount of armor damage, falling just behind that of M995. The current go-to armor for most players is a mix of mobility and protection in that of, say, the Gen 4 Assault, or something equivalent. This covers the chest, the stomach, and the arms, as you can see here in the tooltip, and tends to be something rather easily obtained from raiders and, say, scav boss guards. So let's assume that someone decides to take a shot at you from a relative distance, but let's say those shots are just a little bit off. Maybe one sails a little low, hits your stomach. 
One sails a little right, hits your left arm. One sails a little left, hits your right arm. And finally, another one hits your stomach again with the now fifth shot landing center mass. It's not an outlandish scenario considering that people in Tarkov tend to AD spam strafe around and you could likely miss the head and chest with a moving target. In this scenario, all of the non-vital shots that hit the stomach and arms reduced the overall durability of the armor. And that is where the problem is. To explain this, again, let's take another step back. Armor level is only as good as the amount of durability left on it, and this is measured as what durability is left on the armor versus what the total durability of the armor was when it was brand new. If you repair it, it's still based on that untainted by a PMC fresh as a daisy durability. For example, a brand new fort has a durability of 85. If you zero it and then repair it, it drops to somewhere around 70. That's still considered 70 out of 85, or 82% as effective as it was when it was brand new. The lower the durability gets, the more scuffed the armor becomes, the higher chance a round is going to penetrate it. Makes sense? Okay, cool. So back to our Gen 4 scenario. The way the armor works currently, and I say currently again as it's supposed to be modified at some point in the future, is no matter where the armor is hit, if it is hit, it takes some durability loss. So, when a Gen 4 is hit in the arm, it gets a little scuffed. When it gets hit in the stomach, it gets a little bit more scuffed. By the fifth shot, we're now in that extremely likely to penetrate territory. And if the guy with bad aim suddenly hits that vital chest shot, it's very likely at this point that it's going to kill you due to all of those non-vital areas taking rounds before it. And let's say you survived that encounter. Those first four shots that hit those non-vital areas, dropping your overall durability from 75 brand new down to 38, and the fifth shot left you barely able to survive, now puts your armor to 29. Now, you're in trouble. If five minutes later you hit your next firefight, you might not likely survive being hit at all because the armor is now the equivalent of wearing like a tier 3 chest piece instead of a tier 5, and getting worse as the hits come in. And this, of course, does not speak yet as to the increase in expense that is incurred as a result of having to repair the armor between raids. Now ask yourself this, which is more expensive? Repairing armor due to stomach and arm hits that were protected, or healing those zones with meds and surgical kits? But here's the thing, we have surgical kits now. The Serve 12 takes 25 seconds, but gives us back 90 plus percent of a limb or stomach. And the smaller kit restores 45 to 50 percent, but takes half as much time. The Serve 12 even repairs a broken bone, although it obviously takes a lot longer than just using a splint. Okay, let's look at scenario two. The same hit pattern, but this time we'll have our PMC wearing a TAC Tech. The TAC Tech has considerably less durability at only 50 brand new, and it only covers the chest, leaving the arms and stomach exposed. Now again, let's look at the same prior scenario. Stomach, Arm, arm, stomach, chest. In this case, the stomach ends up zeroed. Each arm ends up having very low HP, but not blackened out, and the chest takes a single round. Compared to the Gen 4 Assault, it only has the first shot penetration chance of 23.7. This, if mapped out in a scenario, is nearly double the survivability of the alternative of using a Gen 4 Assault for the extra zonal protection for the first encounter. It is also astronomically higher in likelihood of survivability for a second and third encounter using the same unreplaced armor versus the alternative. So let's look at one more. 545 BS ammo versus a fort, and BS ammo versus a slick. Using the same center of mass scenario, stomach, arm, arm, stomach, chest, the fifth shot of BS ammo has a 77% chance to penetrate a fort armor, rendering this armor relatively useless. Compared to a chest-only slick armor piece, and the slick would have taken a single hit with a pen chance of only 12.7%. And in all of these scenarios, the chest-only rigs are typically made of lighter, more inexpensively repaired, and better repaired materials, and usually have less durability loss than their more armoring counterparts. They also have significantly less movement penalty, and typically also weigh less, which allows you to carry more stuff out of the raid with you. But this all circles back to the simple truth of how the game works now. If you win a firefight, you can retreat to an area, usually to hide and heal your busted up body and still retain the nice, high durability of that chest armor, allowing you to fight your next opponent at nearly 100% instead of relegating yourself back down to the level of someone wearing an untar vest 
but with the same obscure multiplier worse in the form of a movement penalty. All of this theory crafting is great, but what about an actual gaming scenario? Well, for this series of interactions, I'm on reserve in the field out back of the scav school near the teamwork extract. I'm wearing a 110 rig and have a decent enough gun in that of the recently buffed MP7 with FMJ rounds. Through these firefights, you can see that I take several hits. I think there's a dude over there. Oh, there's his friend shooting me in the ass. Unfortunately, the only thing he can seem to nip are my legs. No, it did not. Did I nade snipe that dude? There's a duo here. A guy in back and there's a guy up front. Where's your friend? Your friend's in the back sniping. I saw him take a shot at me. He was standing right up on the rise. Did you catch all of that? So yeah, I took some hits to the arms. I lost an arm. I took some hits to the stomach, lost my stomach, but I had a surgical kit and I could repair it. And if you look at the 110 rig, it barely took any damage at all. And here's the interesting thing. Most all of this damage missed the plate carrier. And since it's healable, now I've retained the majority of my chest protection, which served to save my bacon in the following moment. Now, granted, this is only a tier four armored rig and the guys I'm fighting didn't have very strong ammunition or they would have shredded the vest. But Tarkov also has this developing correlation between the more penetration a round has, the less flesh damage it typically does. So even if they had popped my stomach several times with high pen ammo, the radiating damage still would have left me likely to survive a bit more since that penetrating ammo just doesn't do as much damage. I would seriously say to all of you to try and give this a shot. Start saying no to stomach and arms armor and just get in there and see what you can do. And as an added bonus, you'll be leveling your stress resistance and health skills a bit faster now that you're taking flesh damage instead of just having those arms getting absorbed by Gen 4 sleeves. Now, obviously, I realize that in certain scenarios like the leg meta boys using rip rounds and, and Luger CCI and stuff like that, yes, absolutely, you could end up taking some arbitrary shots especially in the case of raiders, which tend to aim more center mass as of late and could hit you in the arms and kill you. I've died a bajillion times to like left arm only damage from raiders that just had Luger CCI in an MPX and completely shredded. But the vast majority of the firefights that you get into don't end up in that type of a scenario. And I truly believe that in this situation, especially when it comes to PVP players that are using the meta rounds, you have a much higher likelihood of survival if you only use chest armor coverage rather than using armor that covers every single conceivable area that you're just going to lose due to extreme loss of durability. Now, of course, this is all theory crafting, and I obviously am throwing my own anecdotal BS into this. But if I may, for my own play testing and for most of the I guess, statistical scenarios that I have run using tools that are provided to us by the community at large already, it seems like it points to a higher survivability rate. And at the end of the day, that's what it really comes down to, right? You want to make more money over time and survive more often so that you can get out with everybody else's loot instead of donating it to the cause. You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks so much, guys, for your time. Hope you have a fantastic day. I will see you in the next one. Turn the power on if you spawn at the power station and interchange, okay? Do your civic duty.